Alright guys, we are officially back for the unit. Where am I pointing, fool? The full rebuild we're doing on it. You guys probably have already watched part one. You might want to know more, and that's what we're here for part two. So um, we're going to get a little bit deeper into the uh, tech side of things. I'm trying to keep it as short as possible, so let's get into it now. So like I talked about in the first video, this whole project escalated very quickly. I'm really excited to show you guys what we got going on. Uh, but before we get into it, we got Sam with us tonight. Sheesh. So Sam is the lead engineer on this project. Um, so he's going to be uh, explaining with me tonight, you know, some of the features and ultimately why we kind of did the things uh, the way we did on this car and the benefits to that. So let's get into it now. So the first thing we're going to get into, which in my opinion is probably one of the most important things we are changing on this car is the uh, Johnson HTP dry sump system we're going to. This is the new the new old setup um, this thing has the original date on it that we engraved in the pump january of 2016. this pump is old she's beat down but she's rebuilt and ready for more we are going to put this pump back in action so like i said this is one of the pumps that came off the old car it's extremely efficient runs a lot cooler the engine itself lasts a lot longer um, with this pump so this is definitely one of the most important things in my opinion of what we're doing to this car so one of the best things about going back to this setup guys is our ability to get rid of the heat exchanger that we had in the back of the car um, from engine water to engine oil as well as getting rid of the entire engine oil cooler as a whole the engine builder on the uh, nexus motor actually recommended that we only put about 65 to 70 hours on that engine that car has been run hard. We had it up to about 110 hours, I think, between services, and we actually just recently pulled it, uh, went through the engine, and the motor builder was absolutely in shock of the condition of that motor. It, all that motor got was rod bearings, crank bearings, uh, cam bearings, and new pistons, you know, just because it's already apart, why not? and they slapped it right back together and that thing's cranking again. Let's keep moving on. All right guys, on to the lowers. First thing you'll probably notice is there's two shock mounts on these guys now. Now these look massive, which they are, but they were actually designed with that in mind. These control arms actually have a crumple zone built into the overlay plates on the bottoms. Now you might think that that's kind of contradictory or something you've never seen before, but we'd rather have these components deform and bend a little bit rather than taking those large shock loads into the arms and into the welds and even into the chassis. We don't want to have our arms super rigid like most of the lower control arms out there because every time you slam into a rock they fatigue and then you go out into the high speed sections in the desert and you hit a G out or you, you know, land off of a jump and that's when your control arms fail. That's all on the lowers now. We'll talk more about them later. Now we're going to move over to the upper control arms. Um, we decided to do something a little bit different with this one. It's, it's pretty common in road racing. And Sam at Dobry Designs was able to basically engineer us a new to off-road uh, upper control arm, you know, using some of the road racing arms characteristics. So what he was able to do is design a completely linear control arm by relocating the frontward uniball cup completely in line with the upright uniball and you guys can see we went with such a uh, large uniball for basically longevity of the joint itself um, as well as to accommodate the 22 inches of travel we're going to be getting without buying through the cycle of the travel since this pivot is always running at a compound angle. Same goes for the rear upper arm pivot. It's completely in line with the upright pivot um, and not side loading the joint or the arm itself. Which basically makes the loading into the upper arm itself and the chassis on the reciprocating end very uh, happy and very predictable You know, as far as where the loads are going. So I think that's enough on the uppers 
and let's get into the next part now let's see what we got going on on the chassis itself we do not have the uh basically the whole front clip yet we don't have the tubing for the front we don't have the bulkheads yet the upper and lower bulkheads which is what the control arms attached to we don't have the shock tower all of that is in the next laser order coming in so we should be expecting those in the next couple weeks but this is what we got for now you guys will notice we have an entire new top cap or a hat whatever you guys want to call it we'll call it a roll cage for now so we decided to go with a full two inch uh, 120 wall chromoly cage we're going to be driving a lot faster now the car is going to be a little bit heavier now figured it's just kind of one of those things that uh isn't really worth skimping out on so we've completely redone the whole uh, roof section so this cage is all two inch 120 wall tubing with inch and three quarter supports um, we're already hacking up a bunch of stuff we might as well just do it while we're here so i'm excited for that i think it looks really good all right guys i think that's enough on the roof and the uh, cage the top hat the cape the whatever you want to call it let's get into the next part all right on to the uprights so these are a component that you really don't want to fail. So I spent a lot of time on the engineering design and calculations to make sure that we have the correct plate thicknesses throughout and have all the gussets in the correct spots so that this is not only a component that performs, but also will survive the beating that these cars get put through. So you'll notice right off the bat that this component is significantly larger than the previous uprights. The spread between the upper and lower control arm is definitely increased and that allows us to have a larger workable space on the chassis and also it increases the load distribution on all of our suspension components. Another really small but in my opinion uh, very important part and a part that is going to help a problem that we have consistently had basically since day one with this car. Back to biz. I have nothing to show you. I can't find the pump but I'm going to talk to you about it. So. Over the last few months since King of the Hammers, um, we've spent a lot of time with the... Why is this chair so squeaky? Torco Engineers, um, as well as Johnson HPT, which is the dry sum system we're going back to, discovered why our differentials uh, were not cooling as they should have. Built us a super trick uh, mechanical differential pump that will be driven off the motor and should, should, I'm gonna say should, solve all of our differential cooling needs um, along with the uh, Torco oil that we have gotten with their engineers and designed specific for this car and this application to run in our diffs. So I'm super excited. Um, we're on to some pretty big things. We've learned a lot. And at the end of the day, we're not just trying to band-aid something, you know, or, you know, fix something just enough to get by. You know, I want to get to the bottom of it solve it and totally run with it all right guys that's all we got for now in this episode um i want to give one last thank you to sam adobe designs for uh, kind of coming in here and taking on this project with us i've certainly learned a lot from him since he's been here um and hopefully i've taught him like one little tiny baby thing maybe maybe that's kind of for him to decide what do you think <laughs> sam i taught you anything yeah, <laughs> so yes Thank you, Sam. Make sure you go follow Sam on Instagram. What's your Instagram, Sam? At Dobry Designs. Dobry Designs. I will, I will do the thingy with the thingy in the corner right there. Um, so go follow Sam. Go follow me if you're not already. It's just my name, Jordan Pellegrino. Um, we'll be back with another video, a little more techie video for you guys that want something like that or interested. We will be back soon. That's all we got for this episode. Thank you again for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. We'll be back later. Later.